Good morning and welcome to worship. We are gathered as the people of Fieldburg Lutheran Church and I am Pastor Eric Swanson. We will have a couple of things I'd like you to know about. Uh, first of all, our three, four, five, six youth will be meeting here at church on Sunday afternoon, uh, February 20th, and that will be from two o'clock to 4 p.m. And so if we have some of the kids who would like to be here, the elementary age kids, three, four, five, six, uh, again, please be here at church on February 20th at uh, 2 p.m. And then also we are going to have a gathering for young adults uh, in that 20 to 30th, 30 year old range. And we will have supper together at the Ballard Country Club on Friday, February 25th at 6 p.m. We'd love to have you together and uh, enjoy a supper together that night. Also, our church council and our committees will be meeting Monday night, February 21st, starting at 6.30. We'll gather in the sanctuary for a shared devotion time and then go to our meetings after that. So please join us for our council and for the committees. Welcome to worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those that you have called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, and lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. People of God, rejoice in this good news. In Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, may we sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. And where there is despair, hope. Guide us so that we may seek to console, to understand, and to love others in your name. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the 45th chapter of Genesis, beginning with verse 3. Joseph said to his brother, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brother, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother, Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. 
and now not do not be dismayed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here for God sent me before you pres pre to preserve your lives for, for the famine has been in these lands for two years and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest God sent me before you to preserve for many for you a remnant on earth and keep and to keep alive for you many survivors so it not, was not you who sent me here but God he has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler over the lands of Egypt hurry and go up to my father and say to him thus says your son Joseph God has made me the Lord of all Egypt come down to me do not delay you shall settle in the land of Goshen and you shall be near me and you your children and your children's children as well as your flocks your herds and all that you have I provide for you there since there are five more years of famine to come so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty and he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them and after that his brothers talked with him the word of the Lord A reading from 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, beginning with verse 35. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? Fool, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed, perhaps of wheat or of some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a physical body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the physical, and then the spiritual. The first man was from earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so are those who are of the dust. And as is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven, what I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. The word of the Lord. Hello, Fieldberg friends. Our story today is from the book of Luke, and Jesus is teaching us that we are called to love. And we're also called to forgive. And um, <clears throat> sometimes it's kind of hard to know how to forgive somebody. Um, and sometimes we have situations where maybe you're with a friend or, um, and you get into an argument or let's say you're at home and mom or dad tell you to turn off the TV or mom says you can't have dessert before supper. And so sometimes all those things get piled up inside of you and you just get kind of angry and you're kind of upset. And we kind of make these faces. Mm, we're upset and mad. And all of a sudden it's like you get locked up with all these feelings inside. And God asks us to forgive. And mom or dad or grandma or grandpa or a teacher may say, you need to say I'm sorry or the other person needs to say sorry to you and you need to forgive them and sometimes that's hard even for adults but when you do forgive and when you do say i'm sorry it makes you feel so much better inside um also god says we also should give and give to others and we will be given back and there's a couple of stories I want to share. 
One of them is um, over Christmas. I was at the post office and a lady was getting out of the car and it was snowy and slushy and I knew it didn't look very safe for her. And so I asked her, may I help you? And she said, oh, she was very happy. And so I helped her get up to the sidewalk and I didn't need anything back from her for helping her. It just made me feel really good inside. Um, you may maybe go to a mall or a store and you may open a door for somebody and you do it just because you want to be nice or help somebody out and you don't get anything back, but you feel good inside. And there's another thing you, um, at Christmas time, we collected presents for families that maybe don't have a lot of money. And we did it because we want to help others and make them feel good. And so Jesus asked us to give and that we will be given too. And so we learned a lot of words today. Forgive, we're called to love. And when we forgive, sometimes it can be just as easy as when we forgive, it, that pain or that thing we're feeling inside can just go away and it feels really good. All right, let's pray. Dear God, help us to remember to forgive. Help us not to be grumpy. Help us to forgive ourselves when we make mistakes. And thank you for always being there. And all God's people say, Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, in his Sermon on the Plain, is speaking to his crowd of disciples. But I say to you that, listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much back again. But instead, love your enemies. Do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High. For God is kind to the ungrateful and to the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be placed into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. When our youngest son, Drake, was in high school, I used to go to the school and pick him up to give him a ride home. And there was a little repeated scene that Drake and I played out on most days when I picked him up. Drake would jump in the car and then with some intentionally exaggerated emotions, he would say, okay, here's what makes me mad. And then Drake would lay out for me whatever was the source of his outrage for that particular day. Mostly he was being lighthearted and, and deliberately over the top in his presentation of his grievances. But still, 
he did become really good at expressing his anger and his frustration with whatever was going on around him in the world. I think our son Drake is not the only one who likes to practice his angry and frustrated behavior. Sometimes I think there might even be a lot of us who are very well practiced in the art of expressing our anger and frustration. Like for me, I recall this one bank where I used to have my car loans, horrible service. Or, or there was this one charge card company with their ridiculous policies. I dropped them and never went back. Or, or what about that car warranty that I once had? They had the most horrendous claims process. Should I go on? You see what I mean? There's, there's reasons why we get angry and frustrated. I bet you have a list of your own too. And it's not just big banks or charge card companies or businesses. There's a whole world of things out there that drive us nuts. It's people. Sometimes people just drive us crazy. And what do we do? Well, it turns out that for some of us, there are those days when we like to rehearse our anger, repeat the stories again and again. We like to convince ourselves that we are right in being angry. Just like my son Drake used to say, here's what makes me mad. And that's why this text that we just read from Luke's gospel is so strange. Sometimes things really are messed up in the world or in the people around us. Sometimes life is frustrating. There are those days in our business dealings or at work or in politics or in our interactions with other people that, that folks can just be hard to deal with. And we get angry for real. And then Jesus says, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. It sounds so nice until you have to actually do it. Because deep down, deep down what we really want to do to those people who irritate us, what we really want to do is stick it to them. That, that seems so normal. That seems sort of natural to us. And that's probably what makes these words from Jesus so difficult. Jesus doesn't say that it's okay to get back at people. Jesus doesn't say that it's okay to return anger for anger or evil for evil. With Jesus, there's no such thing as the right to get revenge or retaliation. In this story, Jesus just tosses that out the window. Instead, Jesus is pushing us in a whole new direction. The faithful person is called to orient life differently. It's built on the ways of God. What Jesus says is, be merciful, just as your father is merciful. The problem, of course, is that the world isn't always nice. Like Jesus even says in his own speaking, people are still going to strike you. People are still going to take your coat from you and, and maybe worse than those things. But these words from Jesus, it's not that Jesus is telling us that we should become passive doormats getting kicked around and stepped on by everybody else in society. In fact, we absolutely cannot permit abusers to abuse. But what Jesus does 
describe is a kind of active defiance that stands up in the face of wrong, but it's an active defiance that doesn't resort to revenge and retaliation. In the way Jesus speaks and describes things, Jesus is undoing whole systems of retribution and escalating violence and unjust behaviors because Jesus here is getting us off the treadmill of repeated and escalating abuse. But Jesus is not putting us out there to do this challenging life change by having us go out there as isolated individuals, working this out one person at a time. It's not just for you standing by yourself to stand up against whole systems of retribution and retaliation. When Jesus speaks and Jesus says, love your enemies, he's not saying you in the singular. The challenge for us reading this story in our English Bibles is that the English language confuses the issue. In the original language, the original version, Jesus is speaking in the plural you. You, all of you love your enemies. So that kind of changes the picture. How could we love our enemies and do that together? How could we love together in ways that would transform the world? I think of the power of the civil rights movement in the fairly recent history of the United States. There were actions like bus boycotts and sit-ins at lunch counters and registering people to vote to draw more people into the process. All of them were non-retaliatory actions that stood up for people and stood in defiance of the violence and the abuse that was done to hold human lives down. Lift people up. Love your enemies. I think of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission in South Africa after the end of apartheid. Rather than revenge, rather than throwing people in jail, instead the Truth and Reconciliation Commission was an opportunity where people were given space to confess their sins, confess their involvement in the systems and structures of abuse. And there could be reconciliation among peoples. In both cases, the hurts and the harms that were done were not declared acceptable. It wasn't just shrug, it's all okay. No, instead the way forward was going to be different. The way forward was definitely not going to be the way of doing more hurting and more harming. The way forward would be the way of love. Of course, that path isn't so easy. It turns out not even Jesus' disciples could get it right. Remember, those disciples... They followed Jesus for three years. They heard him preach and teach. They saw his power to heal and to forgive and to put whole lives back together again. And yet, what happened on the night that Jesus was arrested? Those disciples went out looking for swords and weapons. They we're all ready for a fight and retaliation. Even Jesus' own disciples had trouble learning this way of loving your enemies. This is hard. It's really, really hard. 
And just like those early disciples, people are going to get it wrong. We're going to get it wrong. I'm going to get it wrong. But we shouldn't be too quick to just let ourselves off the hook. Jesus still gave us this teaching, still calls us to something better. Jesus is calling us to the way of God, to be merciful, just as God, our Father, is merciful. It's a lot bigger than just being nice. As Jesus points out, most people already know how to be nice. We are nice to those people who are nice to us first, usually. We even love people as long as they love us first. And we'll share with people, we'll loan them stuff, maybe even lend them money as long as we know that we'll get our stuff back or that they'll pay us back. Maybe, maybe we can even hope that we could lean on them sometime in the future when we need a favor. Anybody, everybody can do that. That's just how you live in a society. That's how human community is held together and has grown and prospered. That's how humans survive. Every regular, ordinary human sinner can do that. Jesus calls us to something even bigger. But Jesus is calling us to something crazy. Love. Even when people don't love you back. Share. Even when people don't share in return. Lend. Expecting nothing in return. The truth is, this is ridiculous. This doesn't make sense. You're going to get taken advantage of. Absolutely. It's not a system for making money. It's not a system for successful, successfully running a business. It's not a way that you're going to achieve personal success or establish financial security. What Jesus is describing, it won't accomplish any of that. It's not a practical formula for winning or coming out on top in the world. And that's the struggle. All the things we want, all the things we strive for the most, those aren't exactly the things that Jesus talks about. Those aren't the things that Jesus does. What Jesus talks about is mercy. And then Jesus goes and does it. He shows mercy even to the unlovable. We're not going to get there in one afternoon. We're not going to get there with one sermon. For those 12 disciples of Jesus, three years of traveling and being with Jesus still wasn't enough to get them there. But still, Jesus does point us in the direction. It's the direction of letting go of selfishness and self-righteousness. It means letting go of revenge and retaliation. It's a whole new direction of forgiveness and mercy and love. It's really hard and it will demand a lot. And it will change the world if we can just lean if we can lean into doing something new together. Amen.
seeing God's mercy and abundant generosity, and then seeing how we as God's people can join together and share that generous goodness, we are willing to respond with our offering prayer. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings. You guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. Amen. Knowing that God has poured out the Holy Spirit upon us in abundance, we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. God who changes us, show us how to love our neighbors and even our enemies. Help your church to follow the way of your love, especially when it is difficult. You always show mercy to us. Now, teach us to show mercy to others. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of creation, bless the land as it rests in the winter season. Watch over those who protect and care for the land. Make the earth ready for a new growing season so that all your children will be fed. God of grace, hear our prayer. God who draws us together, bring an end to hatred, violence, and war. Raise up voices that speak for forgiveness and reconciliation, for justice and peace. Give all people hearts that love, then move us to action. God of grace, hear our prayer. God who renews us, fix our broken relationships in families and communities. Give comfort to minds that are fearful or worried. Heal our bodies when they are sick or in pain. We remember especially those we name to you. Strengthen them and give them hope. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of relationships, hold this congregation, congregation together as one in the faith. Make us joyful in our spirit of community, faithful in our worship, patient in our decision-making, and bold in our love for neighbors. Guide us to love others as you loved us. God of grace, hear our prayer. God, who lives forever, we give thanks for all the faithful people before us. They guided your church, and they, will pass, and they passed on the faith to us. Make us strong in faith so that we, we hand on your good news to those who come before us. God of grace, hear our prayer. Loving God, we are filled with great hope in your promises, and so we lift our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.